Arizona Matsuri. I'm happy to be a part of great tradition, especially in this pandemic situation. My name is Sunny Seki. I'm both author and illustrator, and my specialty is introducing new folk tales from all Japan. So far, I've published four books Lucky Cat, Kappa, and Daruma, and Kokeshi. As you know, Japan and the world are getting closer and closer. Lucky Cat turned into Hello Kitty, right? And Kappa, Kappa is the mysterious the monster living in the water, they turn into Ninja Toto. So the world is getting closer and closer. Today's theme is Senbazuru. This is one crane, one uh, uh, origami of the, uh, the, the crane. And the crane is being popular in Japan as a mysterious bird because they disappear summertime. They come back with winter time. They migrate. And look at their body. Thin neck, neck, and thin the beak, and, and long legs. Really mysterious, kind of elegant bird. There's a famous folk tale called Crane Wife. Have you heard that story? Japanese like the elegant story, an elegant figure. An American likes powerful bird, such as eagle. So if American try to make the story, the, the name will be called the eagle wife. But that's another story. Um, so. Japanese love to make symbolic stories using animals, birds, uh, uh, even monsters. Have you heard Pokemon, Totoro, or even Godzilla? Today, let us talk about the statue of a lucky cat, who made and why. Before that, let me introduce you my wife Judy. She'll tell you the story of Senbazuru a little bit more and going to the uh, lucky cat. I call Judy. She's a crane wife. She lives in Japan and she knows Japanese culture a little bit more than me. Thank you, Sunny. So let me talk about the Senba Zuru. Sen means a thousand and Zuru means the Zuru crane itself. And there are 1,000 of them. So 1,000 cranes has always been significant in the past. Around 1600, there was a famous writer who talked about how to fold this with paper. But realistically, people couldn't do it because there wasn't a lot of paper. Until the 20th century, when paper became more popular, people started to fold these cranes. Sunny and I were very fortunate because when we got married 42 years ago, my mother made 1,000 cranes for us. I can't imagine how long it took her, but they're beautiful. You can see them right here. And they were on display at our wedding, and even today we use them at our children's weddings as well. So they symbolize good luck, long life, and each crane represents a prayer. And now what we're going to talk about is the lucky cat. The lucky cat also has those themes of long life, of happiness, and good luck. So I'd like you now to please sit back and enjoy as we tell you Sunny's story, The Tale of the Lucky Cat. Thank you. The Tale of the Lucky Cat, written and illustrated by Sunny Seiki. A long time ago in Japan, there lived a toy maker named Tokuzo. He was a kind young man who traveled from village to village to sell his toys at festivals. Children loved his toys. Still, Tokuzo was making barely enough money to survive. Some day, he thought, I'm going to create something so unique that everyone will want to have it. The next festival was going to be a big one, and Tokuzo knew that he would be able to sell a lot of toys. So he wanted to hurry to get the best place. He started on his journey, but had no idea 
that soon his life was about to change. He had just entered a small village when suddenly a frightened cat darted past him. It was being chased by a growling dog. Oh no, stop! Tokuzo screamed because he saw an express delivery horse speeding in their direction. He stood helplessly as the horse hit the cat. The accident happened so quickly that the townspeople did not notice the cat at all. But Tokuzo saw that it had been badly hurt. Maybe I can save it. It's still breathing, he said. He quickly found an inn and carried the cat inside. That night, Tokuzo stayed up late. He wrapped the cat's broken leg and made sure that the bed was warm and clean. I'll name you Tama, just like the round bell you are wearing, said Tokuzo. The next morning, Tama opened its eyes and seemed to smile. Good, Tama, I am so relieved. The big festival starts today, but I'm going to stay behind in this small town with you instead. I want to be sure that you get well. The following day, Tokuzo was able to sell a few toys to the village children. With the little money he earned, he bought two fish, one for himself and one for Tama. Tonight we'll celebrate, he thought. He returned to the inn and opened the door. Tama! However, when he lit the candle, he discovered that Tama had died. The next morning, Tokuzo buried Tama in a grave overlooking the broad countryside. His heart was heavy with grief as he said goodbye. The big festival was almost over, but Tokuzo still had time, so he continued on his journey. Suddenly, the sky grew dark. Rumbling thunder warned that a rainstorm was coming fast. He quickly ran to the closest tree for cover. The rain started to pour harder and harder. As Tokuzo wiped his face, he noticed a cat meowing by the temple gate. It seemed to be inviting him to come inside. Surprisingly, this cat looked like Tama, who had died just the day before. Tokuzo forgot about the rain. He ran toward the cat. Tama, Tama, is that you? What are you doing here? I thought you were dead. He had almost touched the cat when suddenly... Bam! There was a huge explosion of light and sound. He turned around and gasped. The tree that had protected him from the rain had been split in half by a powerful bolt of lightning. Tokuzo told everyone how a mysterious cat had saved him. The people were amazed at this story. They could not believe it. How did the cat know that lightning was going to strike? And if it was alive, how could it have called you? Tokuzo did not know how to answer. I am sure that cat saved my life but I have no way to prove it to you. The Osho Sang, holding his prayer beads, was listening carefully. Maybe there is some truth here that we cannot explain. Tokuzo, please spend the night with us at the temple so that we can talk about it.
He went to the meditation garden to think. Tama saved my life, but nobody believes me. What am I supposed to do next? I should create a statue of this cat so that everybody can share my good luck. He asked the Osho Sang for advice. Let me introduce you to old master craftsman. His daughter takes care of him because he is not well. But he is wise and will tell you what you should do. Even though Old Master Craftsman was not feeling well, he was happy to give Tokuzo some advice. Clay is the best material for your statue, and my workshop has everything you will need. You are welcome to stay there. Unfortunately, you will have to work by yourself because I am too sick to help you. When Tokuzo peered into the workshop, his head started to spin. The room was full of tools and clay and pots. Where could he begin? He started to follow Old Master's directions. First, he had to mix the clay. Then, he had to form it into the shape of a cat. Frustrated, he told himself, these don't look like cats at all. Next, he had to bake the clay. But to start a fire, he had to cut some wood. This was much harder than he had expected. Finally, the clay was baked. Tokuzo reached for the oven door and peered down at his work. He couldn't believe his eyes. Oh, look at my cats. What did I do wrong? His carefully formed statues had cracked and shattered into pieces. He brought his work to Old Master Craftsman. This can be a splendid cat, young man, but you did not mix the clay well and the fire was too hot. Tokuzo would not give up. He needed more firewood, so he went back to the tree that had been struck by lightning. He started over again and worked day and night. One fine morning, Old Master was feeling a little better and he came out to watch. He was impressed by Tokuzo's determination. Your cats are looking much better. Now, why don't you make the arm swing by hiding a weight inside the body? The cleverest ideas are often hidden behind what the eye can see. Tokuzo loved that idea. Yes, that will make the cat seem more alive. Thank you so much, Sensei. Now Old Master started to get excited too. A few weeks later, Tokuzo had finally perfected his cats. Look everyone, I did it! My dream has finally come true! Old Master Craftsman came running from his bed. Good job! You did it! His daughter was cheering too. How wonderful! My father is running without his cane. Tokuzo, your cat has chased his pain away. It happened that Old Master's daughter was a talented painter, so she helped to decorate the statues. This cat has a whole new life of its own. Tokuzo was thrilled. They named the cat Maneki Neko, which means the cat that invites good luck. Soon, Maneki Neko statues spread all over Japan, and everybody wanted to have one. As time passed, people started to say that a raised right paw brings fortune 
and a raised left paw invites people and happiness. Osho Song, did Tama really die? Old Master asked. Well, the body can die, but the Kokoro lives forever. Therefore, Tama can always remain in our hearts. This story of the Manikineko reminds us that a good deed is never lost, and any action can change the future. Even a small kitten might remember what you did, and it might even save your life. But for sure, you will always have a special friend forever and ever. Oh, I hope you enjoyed our presentation and the book. Let me show you I drew Senbazuru in my book called Yuko-chan and the Dharma Doll. Inside the cover, you can find Senbazuru coming to the story. Senbazuru is really a Japanese cultural icon to invite a um, healthy, peaceful life. What are you working on here? Oh, I just drew the special coloring page for you. And this one is Raki Cat. This is Orizuru. And by coloring this, I guarantee you, you get good luck and peaceful life. And where can you get this? Simply download it from the Mozzity website. And if you'd like to see some of Sunny's other coloring pages, go to Sunny Seiki's website, sunnyseiki.com, and you can find them there. Thank you so much. We hope you are enjoying Mozzity. And is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, I hope I can see you in person for in next year, right? 2022. Well, don't forget. Arigatou gozaimasu. Bye, matane.